Welcome to session 13 of Complexity Explorer's MESA tutorial, Age of Base Modeling of Python. In the last session, we finished our uh, traders move function, and now we'll do traders eat. Since they've found a location that's optimal for their particular situation, they'll now consume the resources, and then we'll determine if they have enough resources to continue. Let's get started. Please open up your Google Colab or other instance, and we can start coding. So for previous lessons, make sure they've imported your dependencies. In this one, we're using the Google uh, mount function, but you can also upload uh, the sugarscape.txt or sugarmap.txt file if you'd like. All right, so we import our dependencies. We have one helper function that gives us the distance. Then we have our resource classes, which is our uh, sugar and spice agents. All right, and then our trader uh, agent will be spending most of this session. Here's the move session we completed last time, where just to validate that it's working, uh, or verify that it's working, we looked at the distance and the final candidates. Then we have our model class, which is how we initialize our model. And then this manages our uh, stage random activation function uh, that we use to determine which agents move what. Okay. And then we run our model from the last one. You can see we get a distance, right, and the new position that the agent uh, is moving to. All right, now that now that we've validated it's working, I right, will be uh, going here to add the call for the two functions we'll be working this session. So first, agent eat, where they consume the sugar and spice at a uh, given cell, right? And then agent dot maybe die, where we determine if the agent has enough resources uh, to con uh, to continue on. So we'll call those two functions from our trader class. And so now we need to add them to our trader class. And these are much simpler uh, than our agent moves function. So we want it, uh, so we get rid of this print statement from the last set, uh, lesson. We won't need that anymore. And then we'll add uh, the function for eat. Def eat with self in it for uh, Python syntax. Right. And so now you can remember our agents have moved to an optimal location that should maximize their um, uh, that should maximize their marginal rate of substitution. All right. And so now we got to collect. Uh, we have to determine if there's sugar uh, and spice uh, on the on the um, cell. So we'll do sugar patch equals self that get sugar. Right. So this is one of the helper functions we built for our move. You determine whether or not we should move there. That takes one argument in your position. So if we go up to our helper functions, we can see here the get sugar function right, that we use in get sugar amount. Uh, that's part of our move function. Right, so we're just going to write a note to myself here so I understand what my function dependencies are. All right, and it's used in self. Dot So now that we uh, determine, um, uh, now that we determine whether or not we're getting uh, sugar, or we get the sugar from an area, we do if it is a sugar patch. Okay, what we want to do uh, is we want to add this sugar to our um, uh, uh, to our uh, our sugar attributes, right? So uh, so simple Python function plus equals sugar uh, underscore patch dot amount. Right, and then we need to take away the sugar uh, that is in this particular patch. So now we're going to set the sugar underscore patch dot amount to zero. So if this is a sugar patch, we uh, can, the agent takes that sugar and adds it to itself that sugar uh, attribute, and then we uh, and then we remove the sugar from the cell. Right? And then outside the if function, we want to uh, we now need to degrade. The sugar based off what that particular trader's metabolism is. So self dot sugar minus equal self dot metabolism underscore sugar. All right. So we get the sugar. Uh, if there is any sugar there, we add it to the trader's uh, attribute. Right. And then outside the if function, we make sure uh, that we degrade the sugar by what that particular agent's metabolism is. All right. Now uh, we are going to do the same thing with the spice patch. All right, so if it's a spice patch, we self dot spice plus equals spice patch dot amount. We then degrade 
uh, the spice patch. To zero, so we're gonna zero that out because the agent took it all. All right, and then uh, we need to reduce the agent's amount of spice uh, based off you know, what that particular agent's metabolism is. And this is how we can fairly straightforward uh, deal with heterogeneous agent populations that have different attributes. So this is just similar to the sugar patch, right? Use spice patch, uh, and uh, consume any spice that might be in that cell. I need to add, uh, forgot to add the uh, getting the spice. So spice uh, underscore patch equals self that get spice, right? That takes one parameter, which is the position. Okay. So go up to our get spice helper function. I will just put a note here that uh, we're using, uh, that this function is also used in self that. And this actually makes our, um, our eat function. So now I got to test it. Right? Remember, code a little, test a little. So we'll make a print statement. Uh, and I'm just going to put in uh, to print out the agent's um, uh, sugar and spice. And I run that. Oh, and we get an attribute error. What's wrong? All right, oh, we're going to code out. Uh, the agent maybe die function. Okay, and so uh, uh, and so that seems to be working uh, the way we want it to. Okay, now that we, it seems like agent dot eat is working without any issues, we can now create our maybe die uh, helper function. Okay, so again, this is if an agent right after they consume their sugar and spice doesn't have uh, any more sugar or spice resource. Right, then they need to be removed from the simulation. So again, def maybe underscore die. We're gonna make one more helper function for this just to determine how much uh, to test the resources. So we're putting some uh, putting our comments for our function here. Now remember. Uh, Kind of more formal coding when you're coding for uh, public libraries. These would be called your doc strings, all right? And then this would help you kind of build out your API uh, so people can more effectively understand uh, what your code is doing. In this case, we just make some comments to get the habit. Um, so it's easier for to make our code more readable for both ourselves uh, and anybody else who might use it. All right, so we add our, uh, our doc string for our maybe die function. So the first thing we want to do uh, is test and see if they have uh, if they've run out of sugar uh, or spice. All right, so we're going to create another helper function called is starved. All right, that will turn to true or false. And so if it comes back true, uh, then we'll remove them from the simulation. So I'll just put that up here. Starved. Okay, if you remember how we started our function, with just an if statement, uh, this is gonna just return to true or false. All right, we're gonna add our uh, comments here. So this is a helper function for maybe die. And then we're just going to be a simple return. So if the agent's sugar uh, is less than or equal to zero, or right, so if they run out of either, they can no longer continue. Right, if their spice is less than or equal to zero. Right, so if either one of those is true, all right, then they'll meet the conditions uh, for the is starved. 
So if the is starved function returns true, now we want to remove the agents. All right, and there's two places that we have to remove the agents for the simulation. All right, so the first one's going to be um, in the is the grid. Right, so we'll references the agents uh, model attribute, which refers back to the model class, and we'll look at grid. Uh, our grid attribute where we made our uh, multi-grid and then we'll just use the function remove underscore agent. Uh, then we also have to remove it from the scheduler. So we'll refer back to the model which refers to the model class and we'll refer to the model's schedule attribute right? and then we'll do uh, the function for that which is just remove. Okay, so now if is starved is true which means our sugar or the spice is less than zero right? that function will be true and that condition will be true so then we remove them from the uh, grid and remove them from the schedule. Now I want to validate that that's actually occurring. Uh, so we're going to print a unique ID before it occurs. And uh, we're going to print the number uh, of trader agents in the schedule. So this was going to be self.model.schedule, right? And then get type count. Uh, and in this case, we just want to know the number of traders. This will validate, uh, so we'll do that before we run uh, these two remove functions. And I'm just going to copy and paste it. I'm going to do it afterwards as well. So that shows me that it's the same agent uh, and that uh, that they've actually been removed, uh, that the number of traders in the simulation uh, has been removed by one. Okay, so this is a Slight uh, verification that it's doing what we think, but we're actually not testing whether or not it's removed from the grid. Oh, and then uh, we're going to have to increase our step count because only uh, we're only doing it for one right now. That's not really enough time uh, for our agents uh, to starve and then be removed from the scheduler, right? Uh, so we're going to change this to 10, I think. And then, okay, then it runs. Right, as you can see, I got the agent ID uh, and then the number of agents, and it's being uh, it's being reduced by one. All right, so it looks like at least they're being removed from the scheduler for this case, uh, and, and that's valid enough for, or verified enough for what we're trying to do here. So it looks like our eat function and then maybe die function are working properly. All right, so again, it just looks at uh, collects the sugar right, and the spice, and then reduces the agent's metabolism. Uh, and then it goes to the maybe die um, uh, to determine whether or not they've starved. That uses a helper function that returns a true or false, right? Uh, and if the condition is true, then they are removed from the schedule. So that concludes session 13. I right, we'll hope you're enjoying the, uh, the tutorial so far, um, and we'll see you in the next session.